Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Love Reigns, and we are back for another edition of the Random Thoughts of Rain podcast, the live edition during the MPN Network Night. Tonight is very special. It's going to be very special because tonight we are, for the first half of the Random Thoughts of Rain uh, live version, we're going to be doing the best of or highlights of the Verbal Essence Breakout Concert Series um, started by the one and only Ant Heard. Um, If you don't know, our friend, our beloved brother, Ant was in a terrible car accident, um, but glory be to God, he is okay. There are some things that he needs to go through in terms of uh, recovery and surgery and things like that. Uh, to to repair the uh, spinal damage that he had. So we are doing a best of and highlight reel of some of the amazing uh, talents and and acts that Ant has blessed us with in this past year during the Verbal Essence Breakouts session and concert series. So at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the GoFundMe information. Please, if you have if you have anything uh, to donate, if you don't have anything to donate, don't worry. Just help spread the word. Um, we are one community. This is our brother, and we want to show him love, and we want to make sure that he knows that we are one. We are one Duval, and we all thrive and win together, and we will get through this together with him. So, Aunt, I love you. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for everything that you continue to do, uh, not only for me, but for the community. I love you. And we end this together. We got you. My words are my power to spread love and not hate. My words words are are my power power to unite and embrace. My My words words are are my power power to raise up our mental state. My My words words are are my power. power. So just listen and relate. My words are my power to unite the race. My words are my power to invoke what's royal and what's great. My words are my power. So let us create. So let them create. So let them create. My name ain't boy. I don't play games and I'm not a toy. I've elevated from a silly child to state. I don't have time for junk, foolishness, and game. Boy is not my name. My name ain't dog. I don't procreate at a rapid rate just cause I can. And I know raising a child does not make a man. I don't mess with garbage and I don't run in packs. And I don't believe women belong on their back. And I know the difference between pleasure and pain, so dog is not my name. My name ain't pimp. I refuse to be another imp. I don't dress loud to impress the crowd, drive a fancy ride, have some fabulous hair with no brains inside. My woman is neither my bitch, my hoe, my piece, or my property. I got a woman, I treat her properly. I don't have a top hat, fly clothes, and a cane. So pimp is not my name. My name ain't nigger. 
Because I'm neither low, ignorant, nor base. I'm not a slave. I can look you in the face. I don't come from nigger land, wherever that is. And I don't think taking care of my biz is holding my liquor is taking care of my biz. I ain't got time for another card game. Because nigga is not my name. My name ain't colored. My name ain't coon. I ain't a negro or a joke or a balloon, buffoon. I ain't no jungle bunny. I'm no spear chucker. No low down, slimy, shiftless, lazy mother. Ooh. I ain't no son of a bitch and I ain't no bastard. And neither am I ashamed. When you want me, when you want me, just call me Ryan, because that's how I was named. <laughs> I'm clumsy in real life, fun fact about me. Yeah. We draw our own conclusions and chalk lines. Our kind has always made miraculous martyrs. Their murders make media magic, the most marvelous cold cases, but we dig our own graves, don't we? How we dare we be brave? How dare we be brilliant? How dare we be black while their widows and children mourn? 
we march or picket or riot or rot away inside from the helplessness or grief or fear or disgust or maybe we just post the RP on our status to be critiqued by the masses how dare we be late perhaps it would be better if we were never if a black body falls from its frame and there is no hashtag to claim it does it make a sound when it crashes to the ground all bloody all broken all american casualty my community is riddled with tragedy tangled in the complexity of we black out here and we can't just come out and do it any way we want to steve harvey's cool croons a lot like common sense since i've had the time to reflect my intellect rejects things that don't seem natural meanwhile my body just adapts continues to breathe and heartbeat through the abnormalities continues to keep my hands on the steering wheel and eyes facing forward, continues to part his lips to say yes sir when asked if I know how fast I was going, continues to reach into my wallet knowing an unconstitutional ID check is a lot less inconvenient than an untimely death. Will the real one was shot in front of his black owned business in his own hometown. Nipsey Hussle was gunned down the same way and no, it ain't Groundhog's Day. Just April Fools, gold teeth gods, both immortalized by a brutal blaze of bullets, but the one in front of the gun lives forever. Well, excuse me if I don't celebrate. Excuse me if I may weep. If I cannot keep Kendrick's promise to sing, the sting of it all has silenced the melody. This is why we can't have nice things. If it follows your love to be a street sweeper. Like men. Like victory. Like pride. Like dignity. They are taken much Go easier than they came. Like we are ashamed to have loved them in the first place for allowing our digits to dig into the caped hem of their garments and find wholeness and hope. When Tupac died, I cried but did not cope. I was old enough to know what would happen before it happened because this is what happens, right? If a man has not found something for which he would die, he isn't fit to live. This world wants more out of me than I am willing to give, similar to all of the men I have loved and lost. Rest in peace, D'Angelo Stallworth. Rest in peace, Jordan Davis. Trayvon Martin died while courageously whooping a white supremacist ass and may he rest in eternal power and may his legacy forever reign.
Hey man, good morning, beautiful people, man. Good morning, y'all, man. Um, I just wanted to take just a few minutes of your time this morning um, to talk to you guys, man, and let you guys know, to keep you guys updated with what's happening. Uh, I know it's like really early in the morning or whatever. Um, so uh, I'm just going to kind of jump in and, and talk about um, the amazing news. So um, if you guys don't know, I'm currently in Shands and I'm in... Uh, I'm in the trauma unit, and I've been here since February 11th, um, just kind of waiting for uh, the authorization to go to Brooks, Brooks facility, which is one of the, it's like world renowned, it's just known for helping people recover from some of the most traumatic experiences in life, and so um, just, I was just given approval to go to Brooks, man, and I'm, I'm just so excited because they're letting me in on a scholarship, um, meaning that I don't have to pay anything out of pocket for these first two weeks, which is super fantastic, man. Um, and I'm so humbled by it, man. Just God continues just to bless me in every turn, man, like in every turn. So um, I, I, am, I received the scholarship from Brooks, and I'm going to receive a bed in their facility um, as soon as they, it opens up. Now, from what I hear from Brooks, Brooks is an intense, an absolute intense training in physical therapy. And so um, I'm going to need your guys' prayer, your positive, your, your, your positive words, as I'm a warrior. Um, but this is, this is something I've never encountered before. And I'm going to need your encouragement, man. So when they find me a room in Brooks, man, they're going to transfer me from here where I am at Shan's to Brooks, and I'm going to start a daily, literally, they say like it's a daily regimen, family man. Um, just understand, guys, that when you pray and you ask God for something, be prepared. Robin, good morning. Be prepared for how God brings you to for what you've asked. And uh, that's why I have so much joy. Like, and my, like nurses and everything come into my room and they're like, man, we love working with him because he seems so joyous about his situation. They're like, I don't understand how he's you know, like I hear, I have to hear it constantly. Like, I don't understand how you're so such in a good place. I say, one, first and foremost, this has blessed me. Like, this has blessed me. Um, you know, secondly, um, I understand who God is in all of this. You know, what I'm saying. Um, and uh, other than that, guys, I won't keep you guys. Um, if you can share this video, man, so they can just understand what God is doing in my life. Um, and if you want to continue to donate, please donate, man. Thank you so much. A quarter of my goal in less than freaking a day. Uh, oh yeah, you guys see my bear? This is uh, this is Hurdles. My family gave me this bear. My last name is Hurd, and I have Hurdles in front of me to accomplish. So this is Hurdles. I named them Hurdles. Um, good morning, Abby. Love you so much. And I'm still uh, I'm still when I get out of here and I get back into you know into my wheelchair and things of that nature, Abby. I'm I'm gonna be so excited about taking your your, uh, you know, engagement photos and all that stuff, man. Um, I'm so ready for that, man. And congratulations to you. But other than that, guys, I love you guys. I actually got to get ready for this um, interview with Action News that's getting, getting ready to happen right now. And um, I love you guys. Have a fantastic day. And peace and blessings, Joe. It's for us. Mine used to be my chest, 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 my Oh my gosh, we're live. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? This is Love Reigns, and I'm back for another episode of the Random Thoughts of Rain 
podcast live edition during the MPN Network night. Shouts out to uh, Mr. Peterson himself, mm-hmm. Mr. Al Pete. Yep. MPN, y'all make sure y'all follow. Uh, y'all better follow MPN. Y'all better get on this train now. You better, I'm telling you, we doing big things. Shouts out to MJ Baker in the building. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, like y'all better. Yeah, yeah y'all, y'all better, better listen. Y'all better. Y'all listen. Y'all better jump on it. Mr. Al Pete is doing some major things. So shouts out to Mr. Al Pete. Um, uh, so if you, we cut the video short, but we're going to play the rest of it at the end. Um, if you don't know. Uh, this show is dedicated tonight to uh, my brother in poetry in the community, uh, the one and only Mr. Ant Hurd, who is currently recovering from a terrible accident. Um, and we were just talking like, I I, I'm, I feel like it's a blessing that he's still here yep. um, and we still have um, have him here with us. So shouts out to Ant. We love you, Ant. And um, nice. y'all keep donating. Uh, the GoFundMe is is on the bottom of the page. Well, at the on, on the video it is, and we've been sharing it everywhere. Right. You can go to his page, go to Cash App. Uh, make sure you do Ant Designs dollar sign Ant Designs for Cash App, because uh, you know people was out here trying to scam and everything yeah, already. Like, come on, man. Yeah, so, man. but it's all right. Already, already. already. But it's all yeah. good. It's all good because God has him and God has his family, um, and he's here with us. So we love you, Ant. And um, let's see. Uh, oh, a word from our sponsor. No, not from our sponsors. Shouts out to our sponsors that don't know that they sponsored. Um, <laughs> May Rain. Make sure y'all hit up May Rain. Uh, Mayrain.com. Who, she's an, uh, uh, an amazing poet, phenomenal poet out of Miami. Um, my sister in poetry. So y'all make sure y'all support her. This is where my shirt came from. Act like you got ancestors because we need to be reminded. <laughs> okay so act like you got ancestors and uh she also sells candles and all kinds of of goodies so y'all check her out without further ado if you know me you know i love me a old singing somebody <laughs> personally i feel like you know if i could sing when i when i do sing by myself I feel like I'm like a fifth generation Clark sister. Okay. In the car. I'm through. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell me otherwise. I just, you know what I mean? I mean, where is she go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. This girl here be singing. She be singing. She be singing. Uh, she is talented. She is an amazing, not only is she an amazing talent, but she has a beautiful spirit and a beautiful soul. I'm really big on energy. And I just, I fell in love with her from the very beginning. It's been years. Same. I no. fell in love with her. So, the one and only Miss Marquita Williams. <laughs> Hello, hi, hi, <laughs> hi. <laughs> and she's so she's so modest. Oh, and so <laughs> humble. I need to work on that. <laughs> no, listen. But no, keep it. But at, you know, recognize your talent because you have an amazing talent. And I feel like you know, there's a lot of people who can sing. There's very, there's very few people who can sing. <laughs> you be singing. it. You be saying it. Like, you just feel it. You know what I mean? Anytime I hear a song, I don't care how many times I've listened to it. Anytime I hear you sing, I get chills. And to mm-hmm. me, that is more than just someone who is just singing just because. Mm-hmm. Like, you, I can tell. Like, you feel it. I try to. You Man, you do it. <laughs> Shoo, child, you get me every time. Thank you. Every time. Me. If they... Always a fan, forever and always. I'm gonna be at the Grammys with you, right next to me. I'll be right there with you. <laughs> yes, daughter, doing the same thing I was doing right five get six me. years ago. You know. So, Marquita Williams, tell the people who you are and tell them why you are dope. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This is a, no. I didn't okay. mean to curse. Okay. Sorry. Mom. Um, I'm Marquita Williams. I am a native of Jacksonville, Florida. I am a singer, songwriter. I've been singing. Honestly, since I can't remember, so I feel like I've been singing since I was like four, <laughs> maybe five. <laughs> um, I write my own songs. Um, <laughs> the importance, yes. right? Isn't it important? I write my own songs. Um, I, I am a poet sometimes, and I am dope because I think other people are dope. I, I said I'm dope because I think other people are dope. I feel like sometimes if you can 
see you in another person, then that in itself is beautiful. Come for so. work. Come for work. <laughs> so that's why I'm dope because you dope. Oh, yes. And I'm dope because you dope. Right. See? That's it. Yeah. And we can, you know, <laughs> go, I'm going to let, I'm going to, even if my light don't shine, make sure your light shine. Because <laughs> you might need my light. I might need And it. I might need your light. Yeah. Come on. All the time. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So that's what's up. So you said that you, you feel like you've been singing, you know, since you can remember. Yes. What was your very first performance? Uh, that I can remember. That you can remember. Yep. That I can remember. It was in the Gateway Mall. Uh, and, uh, my sister, my god sister at the time was like, we're going to put you in this talent, talent show. I didn't know I could sing. <laughs> they just had me learn Annie's Tomorrow. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, okay, okay, let's do it. And so I did it. I think I won. I don't remember. I was very young. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm but sure <laughs> but no. I, what I know is it was in the Gateway Mall. I remember that part very distinctly because that was the spot. Yeah. That was the spot when I was growing up. It was the Gateway Mall. And so that was uh, my first performance was on a small stage in the mall singing Annie's Tomorrow. Wow. And I'm Tomorrow. sure you tore that up. I can only imagine. I'm I don't sure even remember. That. That's the thing. It was so long ago. It was so long. I had to be five. Maybe five. So your very first performance in front of, like, as an adult, in front of a, a room full of strangers. You remember that? A room full of strangers? Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't, because from that moment on, yeah. I feel like I've been singing ever since then. So it's like, uh, I feel like there aren't many, I feel, I can't remember many first because I feel like I've just been doing it yeah. since I could walk. <laughs> so. yeah. And that's how you know you were, you were made for that. You know uh, what I mean? Like, it's just certain people that you look at, you're like, oh yeah, you was... This is in you. You <laughs> supposed to do that right there, right there, right. So you know, as far as like that feeling of of knowing, right, that you that this is something that you were supposed to do. I'm right. sure as time goes on, even though you have that walk, or you feel like you know this is something that I'm supposed to do. I'm sure that there have been times where you're just like, man, I don't know. Yeah. So how how walk us through that? Like, how does that? How do you get yourself out of those moments? So how, oh, oh, that was, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Ooh, cause, but what you just asked me was, how do you get yourself out of depression? Right, basically. <laughs> how do you yeah. get yourself out of depression? Yeah. Um, honestly, I just have to sit and think about who it is that I know that I am. Because mm-hmm. what's, I have a little voice inside of me telling me who I'm not. Mm-hmm. And then I have to listen to the other voice that's actually saying, but come on now, you know who you are, though. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> right. you know who you are. So, like, stop listening to that doubt that's sitting in the back. Yeah. They don't even drive. So, <laughs> they ain't got no license. They ain't got no license. And you letting the doubt drive. Right. So, I, I have to listen to the other voice that's like, come on, we the truth, the reality of who it is that I am. Yeah. And then my friends are, like, a very big, big part of my life. They are solid. They are solid, and they they hold me to it too. Yeah. Even when I don't want to hear it, <laughs> right? They hold me to it. So when is this new project coming out? <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> we waiting. I we mean. waiting. I mean, because the world needs to hear you, but okay. Like they they give it to me. They give it to me straight. So my friends and that other little voice that says, "Remember who you are, girl. Stop playing with yourself." <laughs> My mom always says, remember who you are and remember whose you are. Whose you are. My mom says that, too. I love your mom. Can we just talk about your mom? Can we just praise your mama real quick? Because, listen, Miss Cindy. I know you love love my mama. I love your mother. I know. I know. Oh, my. Listen, if don't nobody else ride for me, Miss Cindy gonna ride for me. She will. I I love me. She is a rider for Taryn. And I'm just like, it's how is Taryn? She's fine. (laughs) <laughs> I love is fine. Shouts out to Miss Sydney. I love you because you're amazing, and you bless us with the, this amazing person. Uh, you know, so thank you. Shouts out to Miss Sydney. That's my mama. That's my mama. <laughs> like that. Yes, mama. <laughs> Y'all gonna be sitting next to each other at the Grammys. Yep. I know. I know. I've heard the conversations. I was told. <laughs> right. You ain't got no choice. I mean, you know. That's. Mama said it. She did. She did. She definitely did. So, insert pandemic, right? Uh, Um, There's been a lot of people, especially a lot of creatives, who 
really just became like just lost. Like, I mean, it blindsided everybody, yeah. right? What was it? Um, or let me let me ask this instead of what was it? During that time where you, you know, all of the live shows got taken away, a lot of times as artists and creatives, we use the audience as therapy. Yes. We we look forward to open mics. We look forward to performing. Mm -hmm. All of that gets taken away. Yep. What was your process in pivoting and and staying focused and continuing to create during because I mean we're still in it. We're still in it. <laughs> we're still, <laughs> we're in, still the in the middle of it. We're, we're still in the thick of it. You know, but you just released a new project. Like how did how do you do that in the midst of a pandemic? Honestly, as a as a creative for the yeah. pandemic, you have no choice but to sit with yourself. That that's it. Like you yeah. had, I had no choice but to sit with myself, go through what I was going through, and write it out. That's really what it was. Um, because as we're social, a lot of us creatives are social, even when we don't want to be. But we are social, and so when that was taken away, you had a lot of people realize some things about themselves that they didn't know before. Like, I didn't realize that I don't like being quiet <laughs> and I don't like sitting in the silence or just sitting by myself. And so I had to do that. And so in that moment, I had to start holding myself accountable to the things I, because doing the shows, being social and make sure I was on the scene so people could see my face, I was putting off a lot of things that I was supposed to do that I needed to do, like writing the song, getting this project together. I was, it was my little escape goat. It was like my little crutch. Cause I, I gotta go see this person. I gotta go to this show. You know, I gotta be there. And really I just need to sit my behind down cause I'm sitting out here supporting other people's projects and I can't even get mine off the ground cause Ooh. I'm being social. Yeah, that's a word. <laughs> so yeah, it, 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 it was rough because also shows were canceled. So therefore money was canceled. And that, that was like a big source of my income was my shows, my performances. Weddings were canceled. I sang at weddings. But those were canceled. So uh, what really helped me also was actually you and Aunt. You were the only people that were actually putting on virtual shows. And so, and then you were always asking me to come do it. And I said, yes. <laughs> yes, please. Put yeah. my cash up across the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I still had the opportunity to perform yeah. because you guys still provided the platform. Yeah. That's awesome. And I appreciate you for always answering the questions. Of course. Oh, okay. yeah. of course. Because I'd be like, hey, Marquis. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what you need, yes. <laughs> but I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, and I think for me, like that was, I was forced to sit with myself, but also still, there's still a part of me that was like, oh, crap. What am I going to do for other people? Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. I feel like to a certain extent, people were depending on me to figure it out. Mm. Like, you got to figure mm. some shit out. Hey, you going to do some shows? <laughs> you going to do, you going to curate some shit? Like, you know what I mean? What are you going to do? So I think that that, to me, that was a, um, a responsibility, you know what I mean? That I had because it ain't about, like, I just feel like we were put here. You know, we all have certain paths. Um, and I think that that was one of my paths was like to curate and create those spaces. You know? right. So thank you for that, for, for, for always answering the call um, because you're dope. Like you're dope. And I just feel like the world needs to know who you are. Thank you. you know, I, this is one. Let me say this is a question I've always wanted to ask singers because uh. <laughs> I can't sing like that. I can carry a tune. I can admit that I can carry a tune when you're up there. And it just, it, it's, it seems like you get taken over. What does that feel like when you're just belting out this just magic and beauty and sun rays and flowers and rainbows and chills? Is that and what it sounds like? That's what it sounds like. That's what it feel like. I know for me, it feel like magic. It feel like this, this, this burst of energy just coming up. In the middle of my chest, <laughs> down my arm. That's legit how it feels right. every time I hear you wow. sing. Oh. So on your end, when you're providing that, what does that feel like? It feels like a release. It because you know some people run. I don't know who does that, but <laughs> <laughs> like who does that for fun? But people, <laughs> there are people that 
you know, they jog to to blow off steam or they write or they um, <laughs> do drugs. But <laughs> for me, to, to be able to sing, it, it honestly is just a release. I can allow every emotion, even if it's a, an emotion that has no tie to the, the note that I'm singing, I can let that out as well. So it's just like I'm just – I get so – taken over sometimes that I have to ring myself back in because I I will I will I'll cry on someone's stage and, and it'll be an upbeat song but I had to get that emotion out right. so it really feels like an emotional release that you've just been holding on to it's like you're holding your breath and you finally get to breathe that's what it feels like yeah like I've been holding my breath and this is my opportunity to breathe and that's how I perceive <laughs> it is like that's how that's exactly how I receive it. So ultimately, what is it that you want people, when they hear you sing or when they hear a Marquita Williams song, what is it that you want people to get from you? From me, I want I want to be relatable. I want people to hear a Marquita song and be like, I was there before. I know that feeling. Who she is talking to me. Cause I had to talk to myself and that's, that's one thing I want people to get when they hear my music is something that they've experienced before. Um, and, and even if they've never experienced it, I want them to be able to feel it as if they've experienced it. So even if they've never felt what I've gone through or the heartbreak in my new song, I want them to be like, dang, that must be what it feels like to get your heart broken. Yeah. And so I just want them to feel what I'm feeling or just kind of reminisce on what they've been through or or try to pull through. If anything, if I'm talking to someone about my music and how many times I've doubted myself and I don't be- trust in myself, don't believe the process, none of that, yeah. I want them to be like, well, Marquita did it, so I can do it too. Yeah. She I'm pushed right. through, so I'm sure I can push through. Yeah. So speaking of your new single, <clears throat> listen, <laughs> if y'all have not... <laughs> downloaded this the the new uh single from marquita williams i'm okay yes. please do yourself a favor and yes. do it now no matt do it after the interview <laughs> go download it play it run them plays up on let Spotify. it spin at night let it spin at night for real do that do that Seriously. do that with y'all with all let your it friends spin at night. that's how you can support yep. your friends this is true. let it just spin at so. night press play you ain't even got to turn it up turn the volume down yep. and just let it let play. It play make a playlist of all your friends and just let it play i do that right I literally have i do that. too i do the same thing just let it play right so this new single i'm okay can we just um <laughs> I don't know if it's the, I don't know if it's because I am where I am mm. mentally uh, in terms of my relationship with my heart right now, right. Um, but that song Ooh, relationship with my, my heart. relationship I with like my heart because we gotta good. we 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 it's it can be toxic it can yep. <laughs> sometimes the relationship yes. with you know, me and my heart. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we ain't always on the same page. Right. We don't always agree, um, but. It's such a powerful song because you don't, when you think of like a breakup song or like a, a song that where you're releasing and you're talking about a relationship, you know, it's, you, it might leave you sobbing. It might leave True. you crying. It might leave, my go-to sob breakup song is uh, Blue Cantrell. Um, uh, uh, that's the one where she's like, uh, the upbeat one? No, it's oh, okay, a real okay. slow one. I'm not um, sure that one. I can't think of it. It's that one, and then it's like Deborah Cox. Where do we go from here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All the sad, you know, the sad stuff. But it's refreshing to hear a song that that saying, you know, I'm okay. Like clearly, there's hurt. Clearly, there's right. pain there. Right. But I'm okay. But I'm okay. You know, I know that you worry about me. I'm okay. I'm okay. You know. Yeah. And I know that you're moving on, but. That's okay. That's okay. That is okay. Move how you gotta move. Please. Nigga. No. <laughs> move how you gotta move. You know what I'm saying? But I'm okay, right? So, um, what was that? Like how because I'm sure that that <laughs> wasn't an easy process, especially to be positive about it. Like it took some time. I can imagine. It took some, it, <laughs> it took some time. Cause when we go through breakups, we don't immediately wish the other person well. We wish, we wish they fall in a well. 
Sorry, I didn't mean that. But we don't always immediately wish them well. And um, so that was a, a, a very long process because it was kind of fresh when I did write the song. Uh, but also with it, it was a breakup. I went through a breakup and I had to let a lot of my ego go. I was telling I was telling a lot of people this, like whenever I tell people, like how are, whenever I'm asked, how are you doing? How do you feel about this breakup or whatever the case may be? I say I had to let a lot of my ego go. I was thinking that, how dare you not want to be with me? I know I'm dope. Right. Like, I know I'm fly, right? And then, of course, I'm like, well, maybe you ain't. <laughs> but no, I know I am. And But I had to let the ego go because it wasn't me. I could have been the best thing walking, dripping gold. I mean, smelling like a pound of roses. And I still, it wouldn't, it would have never been me. It would have never been me. It was something that that person had going on that he needed to work through. But the fact that he had to work through these situations, I was like collateral damage in that. And so I had to go through that. I had to process through those feelings and write this song. And eventually I was like, I'm, I'm okay. Of course, I'm going through this hurt, This, I'm, but I'm going to be okay. Yeah. My heart might be broken, but it's durable. Right. You know, it's been through heartbreak before. It'll, it'll, it'll bounce back yeah. and I'm okay. And you know what? I hope you are too. Right. At the end of the right. day, I really hope that you are. And, and even if you aren't, I hope that you are. Right. I hope that you can get to that point of being okay. Yeah. There's it's so a much time. power in that. There's so much there and you're right, it does take time. It there, takes there's time. so much power in especially when you when you get to a point where you realize you have to let go of ego. Mm, let it go. We place so many expectations on other on our our partners or right. the person that we felt like we were supposed to be with right. and we try to make them fit into this mold. And then once they start to deviate outside of that, then you you start then that's when your ego gets bruised. That's when <laughs> you you start feeling things that you know you start feeling bitter, you start feeling right. angry, and then you you get pissed off. You go through all of these different stages yeah. and phases, but it's so powerful to get to a point where you can say like I'm okay. And I really hope that you're okay. Like, there's no ill feelings. None. You know what I mean? I made my heart is still bruised. Right. But at the same time, I realized that that just that just wasn't for me. Right. You wasn't. know, you served your purpose. Right. Let these wounds heal. Yeah. So I'm gonna bleed on nobody else. <laughs> yes. And I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. I'll I'll be okay. Yeah. The pain eventually will subside, and it made for good music. Yeah. <laughs> You know how I knew. You know how I could tell that 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 song was a release for you. How at the very beginning when you say this is hard, it was hard. I could tell. I could because you can hear it. You can hear this is hard. It was like, hard. Yeah. So how when you once you recorded it mm -hmm. and it was done, how did that feel? So before I was done with it, um, I think what also made the song hard was that I went through. I had pretty much had to make myself relive the situation to write some of it. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back into some of the messages that I had that we had shared. And, oh, yeah, ooh, that was, ooh, ooh. Yeah, she, that was hard. That was, that was hard. But uh, I went through some of the messages that we shared so that I could, you know, produce that project. And, um, and it was, it was like I was living it over again. But um, I was like, there's a purpose behind it. So let's just let's wipe these tears and let's write this song. And um, when it was done, honestly, I didn't really feel like it was done until it came out. Mm. And I, I, when it came out and I woke up the next morning and I, I think I shared it or Netta shared it, uh, one of my friends shared it, but I, I realized it's out. It mm. is out. Okay. It's not just sitting in my email. It mm. is actually out. Whew. Thank. I sat on the sofa and I was like, "Oh, thank God!" Because <laughs> it just felt better that yeah. it was it was out. I I had to get it off of my chest and get it onto someone's music platform, and it, I felt much better once it was out. So it felt. I, I cried. I welled up. I didn't cry, but I welled up. And I was like, thug, thug. "I'm a G." <laughs> I'm a G. Yep. And I was like, "I was like, whoo." I ain't gonna cry. It's right. done. It's out there. It's 
<laughs> Let's keep it moving. Yeah. It was it just pushed me, gave me more momentum to go to my next project. So mm-hmm. it felt good. It felt good. It felt like, thank God. It's over. <laughs> this is over. So what has the response been? Uh so one response that I think is really cool is that I don't I don't like to brag or say things, mm-hmm. but people say when they hear me sing, Oh, you gave me chills, you gave me chills. And and that's usually live. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever had anyone tell me that just listening to my song mm-hmm. on, you know, Spotify or, or iTunes made gave them chills. I've been getting that left and right. So wow. that that throws me because I've never I've never experienced that. I was listening to it and it gave me chills. I'm like, just the just the spinning the record. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. That's new. Yeah. Um I've been getting uh it's relatable. I've been getting a lot of text messages, a lot of DMs. Girl, you did that. Yeah. I felt that. I, I needed that. Why do you know my life? <laughs> <laughs> that I'm getting a lot of why do you know my life? Yeah, my you, girl, I girl. know that. I've been there. And I was, girl, it's so relatable. Yeah. And you, uh, one my friend, Joe, she was like, um, you are out here. <laughs> you are out here singing these people feeling in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> For real. She said, you're singing all these people feel us in the street. So it's really? I'm, it is something that's touching other people. They've been there. They know the feeling. And it's not just women. Yeah. It's men, too, wow. that are like, I really like that. I felt that. I've been there. And that's, you know, men don't like to share that part of themselves. So to get that response from a few men has been nice, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. You know, one thing I always, like, I think about, I, I like, I think the hesitation sometimes when it comes to writing about heartbreak, mm. you think about, oh, crap. Like, what is this? Uh, what is the person <laughs> going to think? <laughs> think? Because they know. <laughs> I'm sure they know. <laughs> you know, like if, it's certain, if I say certain things or if, right. I write, if I write out certain things, then that person is mm. going to know that it's about it's them, about right? Them, yeah. You know, I know what I battle with is is trying to make it like package it in a correct way mm. you know and then i realized like you can't you can't do that like this yeah. is this is this is my truth and this is, is my my feeling yep. you know so do you ever did you think about that in- no good <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. The re- and the reason I did not think about, you know, how that person would feel is because this was my experience, too. Right. It wasn't just his experience. It was mine as well. And so it's not my fault he doesn't have a platform to share <laughs> his side of the story, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> that ain't hey, my fault. Same. Like, <laughs> write a poem. Right. But, <laughs> but it's not my fault you don't have that platform. So, yeah. um, but no, I didn't think about how he would feel about it because at that time I'm no longer responsible for your feelings mm-hmm. at this point. Right? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not responsible for your feelings. I'm not responsible for I'm your not. Feelings. And this is this is me helping heal myself. So I'm I'm responsible for my feelings and this is how I'm coping. So I you know, hope he figures it out. I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. I'm sure he's okay. More than positive, he's okay. More yeah. than positive. Yeah. But I did. You know what I did think after the song was released was I was like, I wonder how that must feel to have someone write a song about you. Because I've never had anyone write a song about me. But I was like, dang, that was, huh? Right. I did think. I wonder what he's thinking. But then I was like, no, I'm not. Because I know <laughs> get he's over okay. that feeling real quick. I know he's okay. I have a, a, a good friend of mine, Tina Vaughn. She has a line in one of her poems. Where she talks and she says, like, you know, about like being a writer and going through a breakup Oof. and saying, you know, um, if you didn't want me to write about you, you shouldn't have broke my heart. I'm like Taylor Swift and Usher in these streets. I'm going <laughs> to sing about you. <laughs> I'm going to sing this about what you. you. You knew this life. Whoops. I mean, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that I was a writer. I'm you an artist. Knew that I was a singer. I have to express myself. <laughs> I mean, I gotta write about experiences and things right. that I've gone through. And so you broke my heart. So <laughs> there's that. I didn't say his name. So. Right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this hit record right. out of here. Though. Didn't say your name. So you should be fine. <laughs> so, uh, so during quarantine, were you able to, or have you been able to discover any new talents or hidden talents? That you didn't know you had? Um, so, yes. 
<laughs> um, I like, so I've created an epoxy business that I'm working on. Really? And it's kind of like crap. And it, okay. it, it really gives me something to do with my hands. So I'm working on that. Um, other than that, I've realized that I don't like, I've realized what I don't like more than anything throughout this. Um, I've realized that I don't like to write uh, my own songs. <laughs> and I think I want other people to write them. Yeah. Uh, let them express their feelings. <laughs> I got you. And then you just say, <laughs> let, let them express their feelings. <laughs> and the only reason is because I had to go through those feelings to put it on paper. And I was like, I don't think I want to do this anymore. <laughs> I don't think I like this. It is hard. It is it is hard. Um, but any special talents other than me starting this epoxy business, I I haven't discovered anything else. Other than I do, I enjoy to partake in the few breezy effects. <laughs> that's, that's about it. That's that's the only thing that's been going on in my pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what's up. So what's coming up? Like what what is what can can fans look forward to? friends, all of that. What can we look forward to from the Marquita Williams? I was just telling MJ this, that when I when I put this single out, I just, I needed to just get it out because it was just sitting in my email. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you need to do this. Just get it out. Stop being funny about yourself and just get it out there. Like um, in the other podcast, they said perfection is just a, what is it? A construct. <laughs> it's not real. It's true. I was, I have to be perfect. I have to be perfect. So I was like, let's just put it out there. When I decided to put it out there, I didn't think about everything else that was going to come along with it. You have to do a CD release. <laughs> you have to do a CD release party. You're, they're going to want a video. So these are things that I'm going to start, that I will be yes. working on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the project more than likely will be coming out somewhere between May and June, uh, the full project. And I'll be working on getting some visuals for that as well. But I was like, oh, man. I have so much to do now. <laughs> Just off one song. Yeah. So, but, That's what's up. Yeah. So and it's awesome. It's coming soon. It's all coming soon. Yeah. No more procrastinating. That's what's up. We ain't gonna let you again. I know. Because I'm just saying that. I don't care where we are. You know, me and Marquis was at a gas station. We just happened to be at a gas station together one time. Right. And this dude was trying to make her sing because I told him I was bragging about her. And he was like, Oh, you should sing something. No, 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 sir. She did. No. We don't do that. We don't, we don't just do sing that. on the spot for free. Who Not are you? Not at all. Are you an A&R? <laughs> she was so no. serious, too. I was dead ass. She was like, dead 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 dead. no. I'm but what I this, can do. What I can do is give you a snippet of this here video, and then you can go and buy her songs. That's what That's what we can do. She definitely did that. <laughs> that is exactly what happened. And I was so impressed. I wasn't even embarrassed. I was just like, she's that's my friend. I love, but I love that. You know what I mean? I love, uh, I don't know. Like, I really, I get a kick out of making people feel good. I, I really do. I really and do. And you do a great job at it, too. I swear, I it. whenever you would um, bring me onto the stage, I <laughs> you used to boost me so much. And I was like, oh, I thought, I, was I thought. <laughs> I would be like, I thought I was going up next. Who I don't know who this is a phenomenal person that she's talking about. And it was me. And I'm just like, she really that she I sees me. And that's me all the time. That's you. MJ. I mean, I just did that the MJ uh Saturday. <laughs> I go, come on, hair. Come on, face. Come on. You are good. You are good. Good I for ego it. stroke. You are good for ego stroke. I'm like, who is she talking about? Because people deserve Me? to feel good. I just, I just want you to receive it when it's been done being done to you. Well, yeah. So why you gotta do that? We ain't talk. We ain't talking about me though. Yeah, because it should be done. But you should not. be able to receive it. Yeah. I do, but we ain't just. You can dish it, but you can't take it. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. She's a, she's a poor, you know, give. She's a poor taker. Mm -hmm. These damn givers. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? I, this is how I look at Honestly, this is how I look at I feel like, especially when you're, like, from a, a curating space, mm -hmm. I feel like I was, you know, certain talents I was given, I was given to, like, outside of, like, performing and hosting and all that, but I was also given a talent and an opportunity to create spaces for other people. Right. You know what I mean? Like creating those spaces, that that's not for me. That's for other people. Cause I'm like, these people are amazing. Mm. 
You know what I mean? Like the world needs to know. Like, yeah, of course, there's the Beyonces and the Jill Scotts and all that stuff. But but those people started from somewhere too. Yeah. You know what I mean? People don't know that Jill Scott started at an open mic. Mm. So did uh, uh, Wale and uh, Chrisette Michelle. Like okay. all these people, this is where they started. They yeah. started. They and so you have to give these. I don't. I feel like there's nothing wrong with giving people their flowers. Right. You know what I mean? And giving people. Um, boosting the ego, like I, I will do that in a heartbeat, especially if you deserve it. I you don't you. deserve it. So we not getting yeah. bricks. <laughs> you get a high five and a dap. <laughs> you might get no. a shoulder, but you might elbow bump. But, but I mean, you know, I just I feel like you know, it's it's it doesn't take anything away from me to shine a light on some on other people, right? Mm-hmm. And give other people their flowers. Right. So, with that being said, I want to give you your flowers. Because um, you are, like I said, you are amazing. Not only are you an amazing talent, you're an amazing person. Thank you. You're an amazing spirit. You're, uh, you know, I appreciate you. I appreciate our friendship. Because we friends, not We friend friends. We friend friends. You know, we friend friends. Friend friends. You know, you can come over. I know. And we can hang out. And we can have some libations right. and we can laugh. That's all we do. That's all we do anyway. All we do is laugh. This interview has For been hours. months coming. Yeah. I think, it, I think, were we supposed to do this before wait, the pandemic? Let me tell you what happened. Remember? Okay, okay so it was after. after. It was after. Real talk. This is what happened. The first time that me and Marquita scheduled this interview probably was, it had to be like August. Okay, I think so. I think so. August or September. We scheduled the interview. Both of us showed up to the interview. Yeah, I don't, was. Was I having a bad day? I think I was having a bad day. I don't day. Even remember. I think I was having a really bad day. People were pissing me off, <laughs> but I still showed up to the interview, and we ended up talking the whole time. The whole time we talked for like an hour, at least plus. an hour plus. Yes, <laughs> it's a minimum of an hour. And neither one of us mentioned the interview at all. <laughs> at all, and then you like you know we just got to reschedule this. <laughs> I but think I think we, did, was, we rescheduled it tw- at we least have. two or three times, and I was just like, "We still didn't do that." It still happened, you know. It's you know, it was it was it was meant to happen this the way, way that it um, the way that it happened. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I want to give you your flowers, and I want to say that I appreciate you. Oh, MJ has your flowers. <laughs> Thank you. Smell them. It smells so great. The sunflowers. I love it. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> is that the edible? I love the edible. It was sunflower. It was sunflower seed. It was the sunflower seed. Don't judge my life. Don't judge my imagination. Oh man! But yes, I love you. I will always hype you up. I will always boost you up because you deserve it. Not just because you're an amazing singer, but just because you're an amazing person. So I appreciate you. I appreciate and I love you. you. I love you. And I love your mama. Oh, God. Because <laughs> your mama love me. I can't wait to show her this. <laughs> hey, Miss Cindy, girl, listen. <laughs> me and Miss Cindy going out for tea or something, man. We go talk. We just go talk. Hello. I love me. Oh, I love I your mama. Know. Let me t- listen. Miss Cindy <laughs> will ride for me. She a rider. <laughs> Miss Cindy is a rider. You hear me? I went somewhere that I probably shouldn't have went, and we just gonna leave it at that. And my mama asked me, "Does Taryn know how does <laughs> how does Taryn feel about it?" Wow. And I'm just like, "Right? Oh, she probably don't give a damn." And she was like, mm, "I don't think you should go until you find out how she feels about it." It's like ten o'clock at night, and she told us to ask how Taryn feels about oh, it. Miss Cindy, she I said, "Mama, me. she don't care." Miss, listen. listen. But that all well, she's I don't think Taryn she I don't think Taryn would I don't approve. think she would approve at all. And I don't think you should go. <laughs> Those are her words. It was and it was done. Um, I mean, you know. Well she said what she said. She said what she said. <laughs> I was like, Lord, this woman. Ooh. I love it. I love your mama though. I really do. So how can people keep in contact with you? How can they follow you and all that good stuff? So you can find any of my music on any music platform. Um, you can also find me on social media platforms underneath Marquita or underneath Marquita Sings. I'm underneath both. So underneath those, I'm getting comfortable 
with posting more. Nice. Um, it, 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 sometimes it feels like the reason I hadn't been posting was because it feels kind of like you're begging. I don't, I don't, mm, I don't know if that's the right word to say, but it just kind of feels like you just like, I'm, I, I want your attention. Give it to me, please. Yeah. And, um, I never wanted to come off as that, but honestly, how 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 am I supposed to get it to you if I don't post it? So, I'm getting ready to post more on Marquita Sings and uh, underneath the, the titles Marquita Sings and Marquita. So you can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter, you can find me on Facebook <laughs> under all of those handles. Yeah, I think it, that actually reminds me of um, I think it was Yeba who yeah, like said her. that she because people kept asking her, you know when she's going to do an album and all this stuff. And she was saying that she didn't want to put it out. Mm. Like she didn't want to put it out during the pandemic mm. because she felt like it would be insensitive. Oh, she should. You know what I mean? Like she felt like, and so <clears throat> when I heard that, I was just, I, what I thought was, I was like, I get it. Like I get that perspective. Right. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to seem like, Oh, we're just ignoring what's right. happening. But at the same time, what I feel is, we need it. Right, that's yeah. true. We that's need true. like that song. That's what I said. That the, you know where I am, and and I think the song resonates so well, so much with me because of where I am. Right. You know, in, in relationship to my heart, like right. it's the it was on time. Mm. It's on time, and it was like I literally have listened to it all day, every day oh, since you released you. it. Send it to my mama. <laughs> we got a family group text, a uh, group chat. Yes, I sent it to them. Group chat. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is listen this is marquita y'all need to know who she is you know what i mean so i appreciate you and i love you, love you and too. thank you for uh for all that you do thank you for everything that um you do not only in terms of putting out there you know this amazing wonderful magic that you do um but just thank you for being a genuine person and a genuine soul and for loving my crazy ass. Oh, I love you so much. Too. And I, <laughs> God knows I love you. And I just want to say thank you for always creating a platform for me. Without fail, you always give me an opportunity to actually put my music somewhere. Even if I'm not putting anything out there, you're you're making me put something out there. Even if it's old, you still got music, don't you? <laughs> it's, it's still available, isn't still, it? I mean, All right, just come on, I need you to sing. I'm saying you, vo- you got the same voice? Always the same voice. So, I mean, you know. You always you always create a platform for me to put my music out there. So, I do appreciate you for that. Yeah. And for loving me. Because I am something. You're amazing. Thank you. And you are too. It's like a love fest. It is. That's all it is. I mean, you know, love does rain. Does it rains. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in to the Random Thoughts of Rain podcast. Once again, shouts out to uh, Mr. Peterson himself. The MPN Network. Shouts out to MJ Baker. Shouts out to the whole MPN family. To the top, as Mr. Al Pete says, we out. Peace. That was bad. Does he say what? This one is for the misfits and the dreamers. For the I'm going to make them believe me believers. For the mamas playing daddy. And for the daddies that's out here playing mama too. Trust me, I see y'all, boo. For the girls that grew up rough in a world that's frostbite cold and still push their way through concrete to bloom an undeniable rose. For the girls, for, I'm sorry, for the boys that grew up without mamas but still treat women well who cherish and uphold doo values but the pool of rhythm and blues where a hip-hop spirit indwells. For the creatives with nine to fives. The number crunchers, data entry specialists, Pencil pushing their ways to authentic soul expression for the braggadocious ones who got it out the mud. The untamable children of bravado, the ones breaking generational curses so their descendants will never have to. For the staring at the ceiling at 3 a.m.ers because their minds won't slow down and their eyes just won't close. Those plotting the next move on this chessboard called life. Or maybe they're up writing that poem they locked away in emotion a long time ago. For the silent ones who live in their minds, the ones who solve the world's issues with love 10,000 times. May their voices transcend sound 
and their solutions carried by movement and touch be found for the ones who've lost themselves in people, in places, and in things for the ones.